Hey everybody, we are back and live, I believe. All right, so uh, it's just after two. I had to uh, lock my cat in the library so that he would, uh, you know, not bug me too much during all this. He's kind of being a little crazy right now. So, um, what, uh, what I'm doing is getting ready for the live draw session. Uh, I am properly caffeined up. I am ready for all of this, and, uh, it's gonna be a good time. Uh, you're seeing my desk space. This is the angle, um, this is what I shoot a lot of, um, a lot of my, my time lapses on, and, uh, you know, you can see me work. Uh, but yeah, it's, um, it's a pretty good space. I have decent lighting in here. Uh, I probably always could use more, especially as my eyes are getting a bit older. Hey, speaking of eyes getting older, check these out. I got a sweet pair of, uh, readers. Well, these are drawers for me. Uh, yeah, so I, um, I'm now wearing these most of the time when I'm doing those little bitty details that you see in my work fun stuff. Uh, yeah, so before we do this, uh, I'm gonna open a package. I just got an Amazon package. Isn't that great? Yeah, so uh, let's see what it is. You ever do that thing where you occasionally have something pre-ordered or uh, ordered something and then forgot what it was? That That's me right now, so let's see what I got. Uh, ooh, hey! I got the Spookies on Blu-ray. Yeah, that's uh, Richard Corbin artwork on the front of it. It's, uh, pretty saucy. Um, yeah, I remember seeing this movie as a kid. It really freaked me out. Uh, it was one of the, the early ones that uh, I saw. Uh, looks like, uh, Spookies came out originally in 1985, so I would have been 10. I probably saw it a bit later than that. Uh, I don't know. My brother's watching. I wonder, do you remember watching this, Eric? Probably, I mean, not based on that, but yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> yes, well, Carly, that, that, that's me on brand. I got a sweet pair of readers. And that's, that's how I roll. Um, so I'm going to quickly do a thing. I'm going to set up my iPad over here um, so that I can hopefully see comments a little better while I'm doing this. But I'm going to keep talking while I do this. Sorry, I intended to have this done earlier, but again, my cat was being crazy, and as much as I love him, uh, he stresses me out when he's bouncing around, and I didn't really want him to knock over anything. So yeah, so what we're going to do is, uh, I now that I have enough caffeine in me, and have my iPad set up, I believe... I can hop on and watch my own Facebook Live. Yep, perfect. Um, that's loading. And here we go. So yeah, I did, I'll show you. Check these out. My, again, my sweet pair of readers. Uh, these are, 1.5, 1.75 strength. I don't know. I started realizing that whenever I was doing uh, a lot of drawing, I was getting some extra eye strain, and um, those kind of helped a lot. Uh, you know, a lot of artists, smart artists, tend to figure out what to do to work a bit less. Somehow, I find myself working more and more, and I, I, I continue to add elements to just everything that I'm drawing, it, it gets a bit out of hand. Um, you know, I, I, I love, I'm whoa, I'm pulling up my own thing. Hold on a second. It's a bit out of hand. Um, you know, I, I, that's annoying. I, my brother's watching. I wonder. Yeah. All right, there we go. I silence that and Sorry about that. I was just trying to like a comment. Okay. 
Okay, sorry about that. Um, hopefully I didn't lose some of the FU right there. Um, I am like apparently just the worst at technology because this is... Okay, here we go. Um, yeah. So anyway, sorry about that. I, I'm going to break everything. Hey, John. Good to see you, man. Uh, hopefully everything's going well. Um, I am going to see if I can turn on comments on this. For some reason, it's not quite letting me do what I want to do. So I'm just going to have to check it, I guess, on that. Uh, I love Facebook Live and being able to do this stuff, but it's kind of a pain in the ass a little bit. Um, so what we're going to do is let's just get going. Let's, we're going to, we're going to draw a bit. So, uh, this is a commission piece that, um, is from my backlog. Uh, it's a really cool one. Uh, it's for a character, uh, the person that ordered this, that's, it's one of their own characters from their own stories. And, uh, Sometimes I some I get a little nervous about doing this kind of thing. Um, I want to, especially when I'm working on something like this, I really want to do it justice. And and I think that one of the things that um, one of the things that about uh, people's private you know personal characters is like they they have they, they love these characters so much and and i'm always a little bit nervous that i'm not going to do them the kind of justice i need to uh this i really i don't know i connected with the character i like the look of it i mean obviously i'm drawing a shirtless dude so that's always fun um but uh i i just you know i i had a lot of fun with the piece and uh so now i'm gonna ink it let me go ahead and show you um what uh, what I'm inking with a little bit. I'm going to move this up just so that we can make sure that everything's in the, on the page. Uh, so I've said it before, but I ink typically with, this is a Hunt 102 Crow Quill. You can kind of see that. Um, I use a couple of them usually. So uh, one is usually a little bit older. One's a little bit newer. You can almost tell by the blob of ink on the side. But... Um, this one probably can get a little bit finer with the details. This one uh, is probably going to be a little bit bigger and looser. This is a this is a pretty big piece, so all the details are, are not incredibly fine. So I'm going to be able to do a lot with just the bigger one, and I'm going to mess with that. You're also going to see me using, uh, rotating out, my fistful of Micron pens. So these um, range everywhere from, like, on this one, I'm probably going to only be doing um, a zero 01, probably to a zero 08. You can kind of see me working on these. Uh, you know, they're pretty interchangeable as they're going, but uh, you'll see different size lines. And a lot of what these can do, I'll even do a little bit here. Like, so this is a fairly new... Um, zero one and that's given me a pretty fine line i'm going to go over here now and i'm going to use a zero eight and you can see that it's 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 a bit of a chunk it's got that good big thick line um you can see the line variation there so i use the different ones to kind of get different effects and even i start to do a thing where like you'll see here um You'll see here that uh, these are all different sizes, but there's even like, there's a couple zero ones, there's a couple zero twos. That's because they, um, they really, whenever I use those, I get a lot of line variation out of them. They wear down and they start to get a little, a little uh, kind of skippy and they, they start to do interesting things. So I always like to have a couple of them I save the old ones and then I and then I have a brand new sharp one to get the cool details. Uh yeah, Josh mentioned the 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 Micron 05 is the weapon of choice. I, I really I love that one. Um 
I, I also find myself using the three a lot because it kind of gives me some variation there. Um, again, just so I'm gonna use, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crack uh, open my ink. Uh, here, let me go ahead and show you the ink that I use too. So I use uh, the, the Yasutomo Black Sumi ink. It's in a green bottle. It is not incredibly waterproof. That is the only thing I do not like about this ink. Um, it's a good, nice, solid black. Um, it flows well from a pen. It works well with a brush. You know, um, I, I, I enjoy the effect that I get with it. It's, it's def definitely, you know, covers everything well. But, um, you know, I wish that it was more waterproof because a lot of times I'm going back with, you know, I'll go back with like a, a white gel pen or I want to do some splatter with white or various things. And some, you know, it, it can kind of start to move in ways that I don't like. The other thing I might be using this afternoon is uh, one of my Zebra pens. Uh, these are great Japanese brush pens. Um, you can see that that line or that point there is pretty fine. I get, and the brush pens I really love because they give me a lot of line variation. I can go, you know, I can go really thin and get thick with them. Um, it does some great stuff. Uh, I enjoy that effect a lot. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I may end up using that a bit on this too. Uh, part of it is, and, and I, I really, you know, for those of you that, that don't, you know, that are, are just starting out drawing, um, or, you know, just enjoy playing with, with pens and stuff like that. I really want to stress, and I, I think you hear people say it, uh, sometimes in nicer ways than others, but like the pens that you use while, while, uh, while I think that, you know, you should, you should definitely use them and have fun with them, the pens that you use uh, don't really matter. Use what you like to use. Uh, I have a lot of friends that, that use, um, that use pretty exclusive, just use brushes and like really, really fantastic brushes. And, um, you know, a couple of them, because we're can be jerks, uh, artists. Uh, a couple of them even, um, you know, would kind of shame me a little bit because I didn't use uh, the classic brushes to, to work with. And, you know, that's their own problem. I'm going to use whatever the hell I want to use. But I really encourage you also to use whatever the hell you want to use. Uh, I'm going to go in now and start laying in with my 102. This is the bigger one, like I said. It's, it's the older one. So I'm gonna kind of get a feel for where that point is right now and what that looks like. And uh, I'm gonna, and you know, I, I tend to start in really arbitrary places. I'm almost always excited to get to the face on characters. So, you know, you're almost always gonna see me starting there, but um, it's a little bit random the way that I, I work, you know, how, how I do this. Um, still, I enjoy the process. I, I love finding things on the page. Uh, my, I really thought that my digital pencils were going to get looser than my, my physical pencil. They did not. Uh, part of it is because I'm challenging myself to get to the point where I actually can do some digital inking. Uh, I still love inking traditionally so much that I don't know that I'm ever going to completely go digital, but, you know, I also didn't think I was really going to ever go uh, digital for my pencils either. But, you know, here I am. And this, this, uh, it's, it's really improved my workflow. It, it, and I love the output. I love, you know, being able to zoom in, you know, I have to be care you have to be careful when you're penciling digitally, you don't want to zoom in too far. Uh, otherwise you'll be drawing, you know, like things that, are just microscopic. We don't want that. But um but uh you know you can you can see right now as I'm using this um some of the line variation I'm getting out of this crow quill pen and, and I love that effect. Uh I I see people that use brushes get even maybe more varied line and some of what I'm doing is almost fakery at this point. You know, I'm I'm kind of like 
using some thin line but and some thick but like if I want to really create like a super thick line I almost have to go over it twice and do some stuff like that and you know that's when you're when you're using a brush it's easier to go really thick sometimes but uh this is what I like to use so I'm pretty happy with it um, I want to invite everybody to uh if you have any questions you know comments please don't hesitate to ask um I am going to try to answer them as I go. Um, I turn the comments on. The comments keep kind of turning off for a minute. So if, um, you know, if, if uh, you do a post, I'll, I'll try to make sure that I catch it. Uh, Anthony, you said, you know, that you always stock up on pens when you go to Japan. Uh, I'm jealous. I would love to visit some of those art shops there. I I do the, the, the next best thing that I can do here, which is just, uh, you know, um, I, I just try to, you know, stock up on jet pins. Jet pins is pretty fantastic. Uh, if, if you are interested in, in pens, you know, on paper and various things, you know, uh, Check out jet pens. I, I get a lot of stuff from there. I get um, I get everything from uh, pens to uh, you can see this is like Deleter Junior uh, Zipatone. You can cut it out and like stick it on in really cool ways. Um, I uh, a lot of people are using that in amazing ways that I don't even begin to understand, and I'm incredibly jealous. Uh, I I. I see what they're doing and I'm just like, you know, James Heron is, is the guy that like, I'm just, I look at, uh, either at, um, you know, he, he's really the guy that I, I look at consistently. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't know how he makes that magic that he does, but he's one of the greatest artists working in comics today. Um, inspiring really. Uh, so um, yeah, so you're starting to see that I'm, I'm starting to kind of sort of get the shape of the face where I want it, kind of trying to define stuff. Um, I don't know how scruffy this guy is. He's very, you know, kind of underneath his skull mask, kind of pretty, so um, I don't want to add too much. This has this cool little element. It's like a like a blue glowing flame on the side of his face here. And I want to kind of lay that in, but I can't tell if it's like a, just a flame element or a tattoo that also glows. So I'm going to treat it pretty fine, the line there, and uh, we'll go from there. You know, if it, if this piece ends up getting colored digitally by somebody at some point, uh, I want to see it. All right. So, um, yeah, so, uh, since last time, last week, we, hey, Gabriel, thanks for checking in. Good to see you. Um, uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for checking in. Uh, you know, since, since the Hong Kong 2020, that was now um, nearly a month ago. Uh, and yeah, things have been interesting, right? We, uh, uh, in that time, my, you know, all of our worlds have changed a lot. Uh, I think at, we had just, you know, uh, they had just canceled um, uh, Emerald City Comic Con. Uh, I'm not even completely sure that they had postponed or canceled uh, Planet Comic Con yet in Kansas City. Uh, I believe maybe they just had, but you know we were seeing all of that kind of coming down the pipe. And um, my answer, you know, I'm always trying to figure out something. Like I'm always trying to figure out a way to pivot to uh, communicate with my audience to to get you know get to interact with all of you. And, um, yeah, so I, I did the Hong Kong thing and I, I had so much fun. 
uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of work, you know, it's a lot of preparation, I feel like. To some degree, I'm actually just bombarding the hell out of people saying, hey, come check out my thing. Uh, but, you know, kind of right now, that's what we have to do. Um, and, you know, because everybody's out promoting things and doing things. But, you know, uh, I, I'm glad that you're, you're here and involved in mine. Um, you know, as I said, I, I think that things changed for all of us. And things changed for me in a pretty big way. Um, over the past month, uh, like so many of us, you know, my productivity changed. What I could do, what I, what I was able to do, you know, I, I obviously had obligations, I had family obligations, uh, some work obligations, but most of those changed in really big ways. Um, the, you know, uh, we were told pencils down on projects. Um, and we were told that because, you know, this, the margins on comics aren't always easy. You know, we, uh, we want to produce and need to produce, but when, you know, when companies are, are putting together work that we don't know when it's even going to be out, it's pretty difficult. And I think that one of the things that, that really that hit me the most was, was going from being an artist that was drawing every single day as much as I could, as much as I, you know, like, like almost, <laughs> almost in a frenzy, uh, you know, working eight, 10, 12 hours every single day, um, here at this art table to being somebody that, that literally all of the, the projects that were so vital, so important and for, for both, you know, my career, but also, you know, my, my family's well being the, the money, you know, um, uh, those changed, those stopped. And I mean, luckily I still, I think for my own maybe sanity, I still had stuff to do. I, I had this backlog of commissions that uh, I've been working on from this fall. Um, we had our family emergency. Um, it was something that we we truly could not plan for, and and was was absolutely uh, rending. I think. Um, and and what we had to do was kind of quickly be able to get uh, family taken care of. And sorry, I'm take, drinking my uh, my next batch of coffee. But um, but part of that was you know we had I had to take commissions, and so many people graciously stepped in and helped out. And and you know part of the thing that I had to do was I, I had to say, hey, look, I still have to do my other work, but. I'm going to do these for you all. And in fact, part of my thing was like, you know, well, people ordered, you know, like this was a, I believe this is a nine by 12 commission. And as you can see, it's, it's 11 by 14, almost 11 by 17. Um, because I was so grateful, you know, and, and so I, I put extra work in, but as everything else has dried up, Drawing wise, in a lot of ways, this thing, being able to do this, being able to do these commissions, being able to work on um, my own stories that like, like I'm, I'm working on a series of short stories right now that are a lot of fun that I never would, I, I never would have been able to get to. Um, you know, those things are, are kind of keeping me sane. Um, most of the work that I'm doing right now that I'm actually getting paid for, honestly, is, uh, is writing work though. That's, that's been a, a really interesting change. Um, thanks Anthony. I, I, I really appreciate that. I, uh, I, I believe that, uh, yours is going to be, uh, the one that we feature tomorrow. I'm just going to throw, go ahead and throw that out there. So, so be ready for that. Um, but, um, you know, this has meant a lot having this and, 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 and 
adjusting to the idea of going from somebody that's working eight hours a day drawing and then another few hours every day writing to being mostly a writer, it's it's been interesting. It's been really weird. I, I, I and and productivity in during this because I think you know we we see people that have been so incredibly fortunate to you know the way that their systems work that they're able to sit down and you know they're like hey I, I wrote a novel in the past you know six weeks or whatever it is um I applaud that I don't I, I'm I have been able to have some days that have been fantastically productive and I've had a lot of days where like I, I couldn't you know uh where I'll get a you know um you know, like I'll need to help out family. I'll need to make some deliveries. I'll need to do things, and and that's part of of life right now. Um, but you know, I I do miss my schedule. I miss I miss work. Classically, you know, I, I miss the the necessity of sitting down and having to uh, draw a page that I know. Um, is going to be in your hands. Uh, that that means a lot to me. Um, uh, thanks everybody. Uh, you know, more of you are on watching right now. Welcome. Um, as I said earlier, this is a piece that I'm doing. It's for my commission backlog. Um, I had a lot of fun with it. I can't wait to get to the background. I kind of wanted to to sort of knock out some of the foreground figure. Uh, when I when I typically draw, um, I really move my page a bit more than this. I kind of didn't want to make anybody like sick with this the spinning page, but um, I do move my 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 page a little bit more. I'm also one of the positive sides here is I'm actually using slightly better posture than I normally do because. Most of the time, I'm I'm tend to be like this. Uh, I have a giant head, and this bowling ball that's sitting on my shoulders, uh, leaning over like that's really bad for your neck and shoulders. We should, you know, I should be sitting up like I am right now more often, but uh, don't always do that because I want to get close to the page. Some of that's the necessity because my eyes are older, but you know, that's you know. Uh, so. I want to open this up to questions. Uh, if you have any questions about anything at all, that can be comics, that can be the state of the world. I probably i i have a I, you know i have a i have a natural aptitude for talking about world issues. Glad to talk about those with you if you'd like. I don't have a natural aptitude. Nobody has a natural aptitude for a damn thing unless it's maybe you know interpretive dance or some art, but. Uh, but um, I, you know, I'll talk. I'll, I'm glad to talk about anything. Uh, you know, I, I uh, I'd love to talk about my comics projects. But if you want to talk about movies or what you're what you're eating, what you're drinking, glad to do that. Uh, feel free to ask any questions, and I will field them. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep rambling, and I worry that I'm going to bore the hell out of you. I mean, I know that you're here to watch me draw, but I really am not great with silence while I'm drawing, so I'm going to fill this time because uh, I worry that I need to. Um, <laughs> okay, wait a minute. This is, this is good. Uh, getting some questions. Yeah. All right. Um, what do you want to see from the inevitable pandemic-themed horror movies? Uh, I don't want to see those. Uh, we've all lived that, and God... Uh, I'm hoping that all of them are just shot on Zoom. That would be really fantastic. You know, get that good, good Zoom, and it can just be, uh, you know, I, I do, I do think that there are some stories that, like, even with the short stories that I've been working on, I think there are themes from this. I think that the feelings of isolation or whatever uh, are pretty important. Um. You know, I, 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 I do. I am fascinated right now by 
some of the relationships that have formed out of this, um, out of necessity in some ways, out of, out of you know, fear, out of loneliness. Uh, you know, I think that can go really, really wrong. So I would, you know, like keep imagining scenarios where maybe someone is, uh, you know, like, like what do you, what do you do whenever you're 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 sheltered in place with um, some kind of a monster? <laughs> you know, that's I know people are actually dealing with that on real very real levels, but you know, uh, um, kind of makes for a fascinating you know examination. Again, don't really want to see it. I'd rather you know right now. I'd rather see just give me like a really cool monster movie or something anything um let's see uh josh asked about properties uh what what properties you haven't worked on that you'd like to in the future writing or drawing um you know i i really would like to as much as possible try to focus on um, continue to focus on creator owned. Um, but, uh, God, I love, you know, the icons of our, our youth, right? You know, like, uh, I've been very fortunate in my career that like, that obviously to work in the bat office so much drawing Batman related stuff, Batman family. You know, that's almost always where my heart goes. Um, but I love, I love so many other areas. Um, there's a couple things recently that I've even talked about pitching with friends and stuff like that. I, I, I realize that I love both the Marvel and DC universes pretty equally. Uh, you know, so many of, of the DC, you know, especially Bat villains, I'm always drawn back to. Um, but I think there's a lot of cool stuff there. You know, I, I love... Um, um, I love the potential of the new, the new, uh, like, black label stuff. I think that, that we can tell some interesting stories. I would love to go to dive a little bit into some of the uh, horror-based DCU kind of stuff. Uh, I can never, ever, ever even become, you know get close to the absolute beauty that horrific beauty let's say that uh that that uh you know um kelly jones brought to uh to dead man but um you know i i would love to do some dead man um, I, you know, especially like a, a, you know, like classic kind of crazy, uh, old school fun horror thing. I, I would love to kind of get back to some of that. Um, I think there are more stories to tell like that. Um, you know, I think that there, there it's interesting because I think that there's a really in good cross section between certain heroes and horrific elements. Um, you know, I mean, so many, you know, really like Arkham Asylum is, is, is a horror story. It, it truly is. And I love that, you know, you can go back and you can see, um, obviously, you know, Swamp Thing, uh, was so the Floronic man scared the hell out of me as a kid. You know, I, I, I would love to examine some of, some of those things. Uh, you know, for Marvel, I, I, I get back to Marvel in a heartbeat. Uh, you know, obviously, I mean, I'm, getting to do something with Wolverine would be fantastic. Uh, I remember, uh, at one point, um, I was, was really thinking about just, just on the side doing like a, uh, like a, a Wolverine short story just to show them, you know, like, Hey, please consider me. Uh, I got busy with other stuff and wasn't able to do it, but, um, God, yeah, Wolverine's pretty amazing. Uh, especially, you know, the feel of some of that stuff from 
you know, like I think about Sylvester's Wolverine a lot. I, I loved, I loved his version. I love that take. You know, he felt kind of solid and just like a real badass. Those were some great, great times for uh, for comics. Um, yeah. So definitely that stuff. Um, uh, I I do want like I think that while while I I'm absolutely happy to draw only draw stuff um it's it's becoming a little harder and harder for me to not you know like not just be like well if if I'm going to draw something I should be writing it too um I mean maybe that's hubris but you know I uh, I like telling stories and I like writing stuff and I think I'm okay at it and um I think that one of the things, you know, it, should I go back to um, DC or Marvel, I I would consider working, you know, with, like, the right writer on something. Um, absolutely. But other than that, like, I, I really would love to go back and do, you know, something where I'm writing and drawing it. I had a... Uh, it, I didn't ever officially pitch it, but I, I kind of like reached out to uh, a couple of folks at DC. Um, I had done this uh, like Old West style uh, Batwoman at one point. And uh, it was it was a commission piece. West take. And it was Gunslinger Batwoman. And, and, and I just, I immediately knew what that story was i knew you know i knew that it was you know kate kane rolling into town you know like uh like like the high plains drifter basically you know and and coming in and and meeting the sheriff of the town uh maggie sawyer and you know like like kind of that that romance and then the the gunslinger ish somewhat um lone ranger ish version of you know batwoman in the wild west i love that i love the possibility of of being able to t you know visit you know villains from the bat universe and characters and stuff like that in that i i, I, I man i'd love to tell that story i still would um yeah i need to I don't know. Things are interesting over at DC right now, and maybe I should check back in and just see if uh, if I could talk to them about that. That'd be a lot of fun. Um, uh, yeah. Thanks, Carly. I I uh, I love that. You know. So let's make. I'm gonna try to make that happen. Um, let's see. We got another question. Uh, Anthony asked, uh, how does a book for Valiant differ from Marvel or DC? Um, I think that in some ways, not much at all. In, in other ways, um, in other ways, it's interesting having, having a, a line that is iconic and and has a has a um a history but they have a little bit of freedom there to try new things in different ways that maybe you know i, I know i know that, that there are expectations of valiant stories but like you know, especially working with heather over over at valiant like one of the things that that she really did was she brought us in and trusted us to be who we were. And I'm not saying that, that, that Marvel and DC don't like, like, I think that, I think that I've been very fortunate in my career and especially my interactions with Marvel and DC were like, you know, they, they didn't know what I did, you know, and they, they, they supported me, you know, Mike Martz back in the day, whenever he brought me into DC, um, you know, really told me from the beginning, like, hey, we like what you do. We know what you do. Come, you know, come do it for us. Um, 
I think I think there is a weird thing personally with working with Valiant where like um I I almost put more pressure on myself in a way when it's something like that because I sometimes sometimes when you're when you're working on a a fantastic DC book or something like that um there are a lot of eyes on you but it's in a different way like like there are fewer valiant books so i feel like all valiant books are kind of elevated and and very very important um you know i think that when the lines at marvel and dc sometimes get so big that like somebody you know i may be on a book and love that book and put my all into it but like if you're a valiant fan you're often checking out all of valiant stuff and, and i and i really love that i love the the ability to to produce something um that that so many people are going to see uh yeah so I, I you know and another thing i mean i want to go ahead and say is that valiant fans are awesome like they're just you know supportive and they you know they they love the the universe and they care about it and, and not that not that other fans don't Every, everybody does i just i don't know it's it's it seems like a very close knit community and I and I love that. I, I think it's it's uh, pretty fantastic. Um, let me check and see how we're doing. Um, John mentioned that that woman was my friend Nick. Yeah, yeah. No, I I love doing that for Nick. It was it was great. Uh, again, just one of my favorite pieces that that I've done. Uh, you know, if if I kind of love the idea too that like me wanting to do a an Elseworlds ish style is I don't know if we're supposed to call it Elseworlds anymore if, if that you know went out with the 90s but god I love Elseworlds um but you know like an Elseworlds ish style gunslinger batwoman um uh you know that came from a commission I, I love the idea that like you know something that we do at a show could spark creativity and out of that you know a series could happen potentially or or just even just you know something that we talk about but yeah it's pretty fantastic to me i, I love it um let's see another question uh ah well okay uh why is this these turn off really fast sorry about that um okay all this mess has brought some change to the comic landscape. Seems like more and more creators using social media to share and interact with fans. Um, do you think this level of interaction is something writers and artists will be able to maintain once things go back to normal? I don't know, Chris. I that's that is a fantastic question. Um, I don't. I don't know what this is going to be like. I don't think, you know, I, I've heard, I have heard more positive, beautiful, connected bits of hope lately. Uh, today, Philip Sablik uh, from Boom, uh, good friends with, posted a YouTube video. You can find it. Um, I linked to it on my Facebook page. I also link to it on Twitter. I, I, it's like eight minutes long and it's, it's fantastic to listen to. Um, I'm hearing, I'm hearing hope. I'm also hearing a lot of fear, a lot of uncertainty. We don't know what this landscape's going to look like. Um, I want to be able to continue this interaction. And I think that you know, a lot of it too depends on like, are we, are we talking about a landscape where we don't have conventions for a year? Because if we don't have conventions for a year, we've got to figure something out. We've got to figure out a way to communicate with all of you. We've got to figure out a way to share, um, 
you know, I personally, um, I do okay. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, we, we, <laughs> when this, when this all started, we were, uh, we were for a minute, for like a half minute there, we were really twee and kind of shitty about, uh, about, you know, like, um, introverts be like this, extroverts be like this, ha ha ha, you poor extroverts. Um, I think that's kind of changed and now we just all realize that, that this sucks, like it just sucks, whether you're an introvert or an extrovert or whatever. But you know, um, as somebody that functions really well in the studio, uh, this, this, you know, day to day prior to this, I was fine. But I still needed conventions. I still needed to get out. I still needed to interact with my friends and with my, um, you know, with my other, you know, my, my, my co-creators. Uh, there was something that was really recharging, you know. Right before this, uh, we went to, to C2E2 in Chicago. And... It was the last show that I went to, and maybe maybe the last show that we'll see for a good little while. But um, even even in spite of the the fear and chaos that came immediately after that, you know, uh, I I looked at you know I looked at that time and I just think about like I got to see my friends and I got to talk to fans and I got that like I came back from that recharged and ready to make comics and uh i didn't know that you know <laughs> we were gonna put most of, of comics on hold but but still there was something there and and i think about that feeling i think about i think about what happens when when you make comics um we spend so much time here just doing this um often you know, rather than talking to fans, it's it's more just kind of us, watch, you know, listening to podcasts or, you know, watching TV or occasionally talking to friends. Like, like there, there used to be, um, I, I used to talk a lot more to my friends just on the phone and stuff like that. And uh, a couple friends, you know, like, I don't know, even like, like two or three times a month we just hop on late at night and be drawing comics and like just shoot the shit for hours and hours and hours. And I think that it sort of made the, this isolation okay. Uh, this new isolation, I don't know. I don't know what it, you know, what it's, what we even do. And, you know, in spite of what I believe all of us want, which is, to have our lives back and have our worlds back. That's, that can't happen for a while because it's not safe and I'm not willing to risk that for anybody. You know, this is a, this is a, a, a weird time. Um, so to, back to your question, I think that we, elements of this are going to continue. I think that, that, you know, personally, like, uh, and I'll kind of go into it a little bit more in a bit, but like, uh, my Patreon, you know, my Patreon was, um, was for comics and cocktails. It was for this very, very specific project that I was doing. Um, uh, that it was just about, um, you know, these cocktail, comic book cocktail recipes. But then, um, this happened and it changed and I had to like, I was like, okay, well, this is not about, about cocktail recipes as much anymore. That can still be there, and it will be there. But this is a way for me to get some kind of content out to you. Uh, and so I built out, I, I have literally built out a year's worth of content um, in various ways. Some that like is, is stuff that I have scheduled and I, I scheduled out for the next year. Some things I'm adding week to week. Uh, you know, I'm doing some some like live video things on there. Uh, I'm doing um, I'm doing a lot of like like new uh, extended 
you know, views of, of me, me drawing stuff. Um, it, I don't know. I, I, I'm figuring out ways to do things on there. And, and I think that regardless of what happens, you know, what we, when we pick our pencils back up and truly go back to day to day work, I think an element of that is definitely going to be there for me. But I think until we get conventions back, I think we're still going to need to figure out how to do stuff like this. It's incredibly important right now. I know that I got the most important question ever from John Popa a minute ago, which was three desert island horror movies go. Um, um, let's see. Uh, I'm going to go with Halloween, the first one. Um, I'm going to go with... Uh, the Shining, and I'm going to go with um. Hmm, that last that last one is really not easy. I'm actually like frantically looking over at my my DVD wall right now, trying to see what that um what that last one might be. Uh, there's so many, like, you can't choose three of anything. You're a jerk. I love you, but you're a jerk. Uh, let's, let's say for that third one, I'm going to go, uh, a little bit weird. I'm going to go with, um, the, uh, remake, the Savini remake of Night of the Living Dead. Because it's really fantastic, and I love the strength that Barbara gets in that, and I saw it at a really great time. I like I I had of course seen the original one, which terrified me, but I was uh, it was I think I literally saw that Savini remake right when it came out, and uh, I you know when you'd find something that was like kind of on TV. And you would uh, turn it on, but it would be like, it was, it was a little bit into it. The first scene had already happened and she was walking up to the farmhouse. So I had, it was already going and for a minute. I had no idea what I was watching and, and it was just fantastic for me. Um, uh, let's see. Um, uh, Josh agrees. Yeah, that it's it's a, it's a great. I mean, I love the old black and white version, but yeah, it's it's a great one. Um, the thing, yeah, the thing. Now the thing. Um. Ah. Uh, see, I'm gonna need a top five. Again, John, you're a jerk. Uh, I want I want the thing on there because, yes, the thing has to be on my desert island horror movie picks because it's definitely a horror movie. Uh, you know, sci-fi horror, but it's, but it, oh, God, that movie is so good. Um, you know, that's, that's the thing. Oh, so many of those Carpenter films from, from that period really affected me. Uh, I, and it's weird because, you know, they're, they're, they're very different. Some are, some are certainly much, much better than others, but, you know, um, Assault on Precinct Thirteen isn't necessarily horror, but it but it captures uh, something there, a feeling. Uh, I think about Prince of Darkness a lot. Um, uh, in 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 the Mouth of Madness is so weird and Lovecraftian and kind of perfect. Uh, you know, I mean, of course, going back to Halloween, like Carpenter. Carpenter is. Uh, is probably going to constantly be on, like most of his films, will probably end up on those those, you know, lists. Uh, I would really prefer maybe not figuring out live, but you know, I, I would love to do a a definite top twenty horror films list. Uh, you know, there's been some new stuff too that like I just that I keep going back to, um, even some stuff that, like, I wasn't, I wasn't really expecting to love the way that I did, 
there's a new movie called Haunt that I really loved that I think I've seen like four times now. Um, you know, uh, my, my studio mate, Amber, probably will, will, uh, stab me, you know, for, for even mentioning it, but, uh, Mandy is a movie that, that I've seen like four times since it came out, and, uh, if, if anybody asks me to watch it again with them, I'll watch it now. So, yeah. So, yes, Jason, agreed. The Thing... Definitely, definitely on that list. Uh, I do love it. So uh, for those of you that are just now joining, uh, I am working on a backlog commission piece. Um, I'm chatting as I'm going, so I'm probably taking a few breaks here and there that I normally wouldn't to check the, the you know, the comments. But uh, I'm plugging right along. This is, a, this is a fun piece. I, I love... You know, um, I love texture. I love trying to add it to stuff. Uh, I think I do okay with it. And uh, I love, you know, kind of getting like the the bone and the, the the antlers. This is kind of a cool, it's it's um, definitely two types of, of animal kind of fused together, very primordial. Uh, like antelope and this might have been a wolf skull, but, um, but, uh, I kind of love that effect. One of the things about some of what I do whenever I ink, I mean, I, I'm, a lot of the information, most of the information is already there when I pencil, but like, for me, it's about finding so much of the depth and texture and, um, feel when I ink. Um, it definitely, you know, I think I kind of opened say, talking about this, but, um, but, you know, you look at, at artists like Mike Mignola, who is arguably my favorite comics creator of all time. Um, he, he's, figured out how to pare every single thing down. Uh, I posted around, like everybody else, I did one of those inking Mignola's, you know, sketches things. Uh, just a hell of a lot of fun. But, um, but you know, I, I, I sat there and I added so many lines to something that, that didn't need extra lines and it was already perfect. And I think that's that's kind of one of the things about what I do as an artist, and I and I'm trying to figure out how to do less. Uh, I'm sure that he won't mind me calling him out on this, but like one of the things uh, I was talking with Scotty Young about recently was we were talking about my art, and he was just like, "Yeah, you draw all the damned windows, you know. I'm the guy that draws all the damned windows. I I need." I need to do less. I need to figure out sometimes how to do that. But this is also how how I like to draw. This is what I draw. Um, it's about, you know, at some point, I would love to mess with pairing my style down some. But I don't know when that's going to happen. Because it seems like lately, everything that I do is just me wanting to draw all the damn windows. Um... I like what it does, and and I, I think that that one of the things you know you can argue that a simpler style or a cartoonier style is is not you know is is some people think that that's easier, and, and it's not. It's not. I, I I actually think that it is much harder to pair what you're doing down to a simple shape. You know, I just drew this dude's nipple and, uh, and like I added texture to it. You know, it's like, well, I don't, should, should it just be a better, a, a more perfectly drawn shape? Yes. You know, like, do you, do you, why draw something with, with 10 lines when you can draw it with one line or with two lines? And, and I really, I respect that. And I, I love that about others and their work. I think that 
whether you're Mignola or Scotty or, um, you know, any number of, of fantastic artists that have come before, they figured out how to pare things down. And, and, I don't know, we all can aspire to that. Um... Uh, Josh just mentioned uh, the color of space. I love that. I actually saw it. Oh God! I'm now I'm gonna get all weepy here. I uh, we we have in Joplin. We over the past couple of years we got a uh, an art house theater. Uh, it's a small run, great spot. Um, uh, called the Book House, and it's named after. Uh, you know, the book house boys in Twin Peaks and they have a lot of, uh, Twin Peaks themed stuff in there, but it's, but it's a, it's a small art, art house theater and independent theater and they show amazing stuff. Uh, right before all of this went down, I managed to see, uh, Parasite in the theater. I managed to see, um, uh, the color out of space in the theater. Uh, I really loved being able to see those things that way uh, you know i mean even even most of the time i was seeing stuff that like within a few weeks was on you know um pay-per-view uh, called paper in that pay-per-view you know it, it was it was streaming basically you know i, I could get it streaming uh but Still, there's something about seeing it at the theater. There's something about seeing it with that, um, you know, with that audience, and and seeing you know the good good sound, and maybe not being able to pause it when you need to get up and pee or want to have a sandwich or something like that. I like that. I like that theater feeling. And right now, I especially miss it. Uh, let's see. Jason said, "Wearing a David Lynch shirt right now. Perfect." I want to see that shirt. Which one is it? Let me know. Um, I uh, I have right here on beside me on my desk. I have a Twin Peaks pen that I love. I you know I know that David Lynch has never necessarily done anything the way that beyond just what he wants to do. And I appreciate that, and I respect that. But God, I want more Twin Peaks. Can we just have, like, every couple of years, three years, something like that, some kind of return to that? Because the return was fantastic and everything I wanted it to be. Wanted it to be, excuse me. And I just want to, you know, I... I I finished that and I immediately wanted to turn around and start it again. I I love all of that stuff. I started um, one of the things that I am slowly working on for my um, for my Patreon is actually a series of Twin Peaks portraits. Uh, the idea is almost that they're they're portraits of the various characters. Um, and they're in, and I draw like picture, them in picture frames actually, but each of the picture frames is actually fitting for that character. So like, um, the log lady's picture frame is literally like a log picture frame. And, you know, um, every, everybody, all the characters, their, their stuff feels very much, you know, like them. Um, uh, again, that was something that I had started a while back, uh, actually right as the return was happening. And, um, you know, so many projects, so many things that I've wanted to do, I, I didn't have time for. Um, I think about that a lot right now. I think about, about, not having time and I think about the things that we want to do and the things that we don't get to focus on um you know those of us with children you know you you you, you go to work you spend time away they go to school you look up they're 15 years old 
we we do. We have a, a bit of a problem with work in this country, with the way that we we fetishize it. Now I'm not saying like personally, I need work. I need I need this to be okay. I absolutely do. Sorry, I put my head so much in the frame a couple times there. But um you know I I need the work. I need to make things to be okay. That's just part of me. But I don't know that I need to be in a situation where I am locking myself away and not doing other things that I want to do. And I know that as as fans of the content, sometimes it's like, well, yeah, but you know, we want more. And as somebody that is a fan of content, I want more. But I want to make sure that the people that are making it are okay. That they're living their lives. That they're not going to sit there and like, you know, like... Comic books are important. You know, they, these stories, they mean something. They mean something to all of us. Movies, TV shows, all of this. Like, we need those things. I don't know, maybe we need to be more like David Lynch. Maybe we need to look at things and say, you know, look, you get this stuff when you get it. We still love you. We're not trying to be jackasses about it. But, like, I want to go make dinner for my family. I want to go, um, you know, see a little bit of the world. Like, like there's, there's... If if the, if there's an expectation that that anyone should should only be one thing, we're doing it wrong. Sorry, I'm going deep here. I'm I'm I have had some time to my thoughts, and you know that can be a little bit maudlin. Not trying to be. Um. Hey, Mike Tisserand is watching for a minute. Uh, sorry, I probably shouldn't just call people out. But uh, Mike uh, and I worked together on Chaos Agent for the Bad Karma Project. And uh, Mike is an amazing animator and illustrator and just fantastic. And uh, so anytime that I see him pop up, it makes me happy. Um... You know, one of the things that, that I, I would like to talk about a little bit is, is how much better my life is for the people that I've met through comics. And I'm talking about the people um, like each of you watching right now. I'm looking, at, I see your names pop up. You have impacted my life. Uh, the creators that I've worked with, you know... Um, Last night I had a pre-con drink because that's what I I do. Um, that, that's what I always do when I'm at a convention. You know, if I, you know, had I been at Emerald City, I would have been out to dinner and had a really great drink, probably with some of the people that that uh, are going to be guests today. Um, uh, last night I I sat on my porch. And, you know, through the miracle of Zoom and social distancing, I had a, uh, I had a really great uh, whiskey sour, classic recipe whiskey sour with Philip Sablick from Boom Studios. I talked about him earlier. You know, he's a great friend and somebody I love and, and, and love talking to and hearing from. But, you know, this industry brought people like that into my life. We are incredibly lucky to have those people. And, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I grew up an incredibly poor kid in uh, southwest Missouri with a single mom and two brothers who I absolutely love. But um, I think there was a point in my life where I, I was like, oh, I'm going to go work in a factory. That's, that's, my, that's what I'm going to do. Like, that's... Who I'm going to be, you know, I might end up living in a trailer or something like that. And I, I live this different life. I live a life where I have, because of drawing comics, I have been invited, you know, and had, had people bring me in to 
places all around the world that I've seen. I, I have met wonderful people, and I'm incredibly grateful for that. It's been fantastic. I'm honored. I know I got a couple other comments. Let's see what those are. Uh, yes, thanks, Carly. Yes, we can go. Uh, we can want more content without having a full misery on the creators. Uh, thanks. I, you know, anybody that wants to hobble me, please don't. Just, you know, not even one ankle. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, I, uh, I think that, um, that, I think that one of the things that back to back to what Chris was saying earlier that I really appreciated was um, this has opened up channels for communication in a way that that maybe were slightly missing before because of time and distance. You know, conventions. Uh, you know, so many of you I've, I've had great conversations with at conventions. You come up, we talked. Um, you know, we've, we've had great talks about the work, but there's always somebody else in line, or there's always something else that we need to do. And now through things like this and through, um, interaction on Patreon and on Instagram and various things, if we're doing it the right way, it becomes much more personal and, and much more, um, uh, like, kind of uh, slower, smaller, more, you know, more perfect. And, 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 some, and it, look, some creators don't want that. Some creators just want to, like, make stuff and, like, not have people bother them. And I get those people. Okay, cool. Be who you are. I respect that. But for me, this... This is where I want to and need to be. You know, this, uh, you know, I, I love the idea that, that, that you're sitting here watching me, you know, work on this piece, that it's coming to life right here, right now. And, and that's really special. Um, you know, they can talk about stuff. And I know that we are in a different situation because we're all sort of locked in places, um, but, you know, we get this, we get this, this, uh, this time, this personal experience. I am curious, you know, what's going to happen with some of these. Uh, for me, I, right now, I, I kind of wanted to do Hong Kong sort of as on my own as possible. I mean, I'm bringing in, uh, some friends to have chats as as this goes on and i know that you know even i've got more friends that i want to talk to in future installments of hong kong but um but um you know i wanted to keep it somewhat contained i i'm seeing things that are being done and, and i applaud anybody that's that's making an effort and i know that there are people are working to figure out virtual cons and and I, I will definitely be a part of any of those as time goes by. But for right now this this is just nice because it's it's something that it's me and it's and it's personal and, and you're getting that interaction and I, I rather love that. Let's see. Um Jason said he owes Scotty a glass of wine. I wanna get on that. Last call always comes too soon. Um, <laughs> never go full misery. Yeah, never go full misery. Uh, I am... Uh, anybody watching Castle Rock? I, uh, I just restarted season one so that I could get to season two. It had been a while and I kind of wanted to go in and... Uh, and watch uh watch season one so that i can kind of prep. i know that they're kind of they're not they're only like loosely connected but but i i'm excited to get to the uh 
It's the misery season. I think it's season two. It definitely has some misery stuff in there, so I want to check that out. I kind of love the idea of, um, it's very, very Stephen King anyway, Castle Rock, this idea that, like, all of those things exist, um, and, you know, we can, we, they all can interweave, and, and you can see characters that have been in other stories in other ways, you know, there's some, uh, great, uh, gender flipping and various things that sort of happen, um, I don't know, I, I, I think it's, it's, it's a fun concept, um, I'm very excited to see where it goes, I hope it, I hope it continues, I, I don't, I haven't heard anything about more, but, you know, I, it's, um, as a lifelong King fan, I, I really, uh, have enjoyed the, all of the Stephen King we've got right now. Uh, I was exhausted last night from prep for this, uh, but I finally started watching, um, uh, Dr. Sleep, and, uh, I'm gonna finish that tonight. I, I really enjoyed it so far. It's, it's really good, and I loved, there's a line in it, uh, Ka is a wheel, and that's from The Gunslinger, uh, but but hearing a character in Doctor Sleep say it, you know, it's just like, oh, that's so perfectly Stephen King. I love that. Let's see. Uh, yeah, let's we can we can definitely try that, Jason. Um, uh, you know, I I love the idea of of what's being done with these, with these, uh, virtual conventions. And if I can find some time, um, let's, let's, let's try to make that happen. Uh, please message me on, on here and, uh, we'll see, we'll see what we can do. Uh, you know, it is with this little thing I'm doing, it's a little crazy, but I, the great thing about being <laughs> virtual is, you know, I can literally be, uh, you know, sitting on my couch doing that. So it's perfectly fine. We can, we can do something. Um, so, hey, I, I just, I was actually thinking about this earlier. Um, this is the first time that I have been, like, fully dressed and absolutely presentable in forever. And all you're really getting is, like, occasionally the top of my hat. Um, but, yeah, I, uh, I have pants on and actual boots on and everything, rather... I've been kind of living, uh, living life in t-shirts and comfy pants or boxers and, uh, and a beanie for basically the past month. And, uh, yeah, that's been, that's been me. So, uh, maybe, maybe the, one of the extra bonuses to doing, uh, virtual conventions, even if you don't necessarily see the person, is that they get to put on pants. Yeah. So, this is great. Let's see. Um, yeah, Jason, thank you. Let's do that. Uh, yeah, and I, you know, I'm, I'm up all hours. So, uh, generally my, um, my, my most productive times have always been in, in like late at night. Uh, so often the things that I'm writing and drawing, uh, I'm doing at about, you know, two in the morning or something like that. I, I tend to wake up, um, although let's be real, none of us are really sleeping during this crap, but, um, normally I, I, I do, uh, five in the mor uh, I go to bed at five in the morning and I wake up at around noon and lately I'm going to bed at five in the morning and waking up around 10, which is just not enough sleep. Uh, I do have absolutely no qualms with naps. Naps are my friend, so I have been trying to sneak a few of those in, which is evening me out some. Other than that, it's all coffee and, uh, you know, occasional walks all the time. That keeps me going. Mm, 
So um, we're at about, uh, let's see, it's 325 here um, in the delightful Midwest. Uh, it's a rainy day. I'm going to keep going uh, on this for about uh, probably about 35 more minutes. And then I'm going to take a bit of a break um, and kind of prep for uh, my talk with James Tynion at 5 p.m. Um, if you have any questions for James and I, uh, please send them in. We'll try to get to those if we can. Um, I know that we kind of have some stuff that we want to talk about theme-wise. Um, that's kind of, kind of what I've done with all of these, with these talks, whether it's with James or talking with Andy Parks coming up later this evening for Cocktail Hour, uh, Scotty, Andrew McLean, and Mitch Garrett's tomorrow. Garrett's tomorrow. Um, uh, I am, am going to have kind of a theme that we're going to examine, each of us. Uh, you know, I've known these people for a bit and like, I, I really chose people that had, that have something that has impacted my life, uh, and the way that I, I create and the way that I am, um, you know, uh, comics is a fairly small industry and we find ourselves talking about a lot of the same things and, and and everyone that I'm speaking with um, has has been a consistent positive force in this industry, and I and I love that. I love I love the idea that we are all different and create in very different ways. And you know, we I mean, sometimes comics feels very small, and sometimes comics feels infinitely huge, and and I, I like that it can kind of be a little bit of both. Um, we have had a really interesting, you know, few years where where we've we've grown. Um, you know, we, we start seeing some of the biggest books out there, like Guts. Um, you know, we've got we've got web comics with massive audiences we've got independent books we've got uh, a resurgence of amazing stuff uh coming out from marvel and dc you know exciting times all around and and i love that there's room for all of it i think that 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 comics really needs to truly be for everybody because comics is a medium not a genre so you know if if you, um, I, I want there to be comics for everyone, people that are nothing like me. And I, I enjoy, I enjoy seeing those things. I enjoy seeing through those, those lenses. Uh, it excites me. It, it, you know, um, th there are plenty of comics that, that I'm like, oh, that's, that's not something that I, that I am necessarily like jonesing to read right now but i think it's important that it's there too you know i um i don't know i i want more comics and and i, I got off on a tangent talking about that but basically everybody that i'm everybody that i'm talking to has has really helped uh my positive outlook on this industry for a while and um especially during this time i have think some things that i want to talk to these people about about you know like like where they are where their headspace is where they're coming from uh, connecting with your audience uh, telling stories the way that you want to tell them um, you know uh, figuring out how to make a, a, a medium work for you that's all important stuff and and that's kind of gonna be some of the focus but back to it if you have any questions please feel free to DM me about it and uh, ask them. You can even say, hey, this is for the segment with 
with James Tynion, or this is for uh, Andy Parks, you know, uh, why do you guys have such beautiful hats? Uh, any, you know, anything you want to ask, we can, we can talk about that, and uh, we'll try to get everything answered. Um, yeah, let's check and see if there's any questions. Let's see. Um, all right. Jason said, "Yeah, does it, yeah." Um, you know, uh, I th I do think that that one of the things that we've really had a lot of lately, um, is, you know, because of the way that this works, like needing to fill the time with things and needing to, uh, you know, uh, get things out to people. Uh, I, you know, while I don't know that aside from, you know, getting, getting this backlog of commissions done for people just so that they can have them, uh, I don't have a lot that is like incredible incredibly urgent right now in my world because most things have hit the pause button except you know except for the the red mother um and that's still going and we're going strong on that and like as soon as all this is back up we're gonna you're gonna get the next issue and the next issue and the next issue we're not gonna there's no the only break that we have had with that is is due to distribution um but um other than that, though, you know, most things that I'm working on have kind of hit the pause button right now. And uh, so I find myself trying to fill my time and, and trying to figure out what, you know, what the next steps are for me and for this industry. And sometimes I do pretty well with it and sometimes I do not in the least. You know, I, I really uh, sometimes, you know, I I posted the past couple of days I, that um, I was writing upstairs in the on the second floor of my studio. That's literally right above me where I am now. That's a, this old attic space. It's kind of cool and creepy. It looks like uh, the attic that Bastion hides in at the school in, uh, in The NeverEnding Story. But, um, um, you know, one day I was fairly productive and got some really great stuff done. And then the next day I found myself just trying to not spin on a control thinking about the world. And that's that's a that's a thing that like we have to adjust to and figure out. It's like do the things you need to do to be okay and definitely, you know, if if you can if you can do something that helps your community, any community, locally, the comics community itself, uh, whatever it is, um, you know, do that. But sometimes, if you if you need to sit there and and like lay on the couch and look out the window for a while, maybe just do that because God knows right now we 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 need something. Um, let's see, uh, no, uh, Jeremy just asked what printer I print my blue lines on. I'm gonna, I can always get it wrong, I'm gonna, let's see, I'm gonna spin around here and try to not knock over my entire setup, but, uh, it's the Epson, um, okay, uh, yeah, so, back, spinning back around. It's the uh, Epson Artisan 1430. It's actually a few years old now. I probably, I know that there's a couple better models out there right now, but the 1430, it's the one that I've had for a while. It's a, it's a large format Epson printer. Um, I, I do think that there are, it's, it's probably, got it maybe five years old now? I've had it for a while. Um, it really has done a good job by me. It, it, you know, there's some banding sometimes and, and I probably don't treat it as well as I should 
but the quality really works. And I mean, you know, when you're when you're printing out guides, you don't you know, they don't have to be photo quality, but I do know that like, I, I, there are people that actually print out like full, beautiful prints on these things. Um, you know, there's some that, that can do better, but I think for the price point, well, it's, it's still a pretty expensive printer, but, um, it definitely does the job for me. And, uh, I've, I've had a lot of luck with it. You kind of have to the only thing about it that I will say that I don't particularly like is that you really it, it can be a bit finicky when you're feeding the paper in. You kind of have to hold your mouth just right whenever you do it. It's like if you tilt your head too much to the left or, you know, look away for a minute, it's going to maybe eat your paper. But um, I figured out how to do it almost every time where it, it does the right thing. The first few times that I did it, it pissed me off and I wanted to throw it out on the lawn. I'm prone to throwing technology out onto the lawn. Hey, William Simpson just joined. Hey, William. I hope things are going well over there. I was actually just thinking about you the other day. Uh, William is... I met him during uh, a tour in uh, Wales and Ireland. And, uh, yeah. Dude, you're brilliant. I'm just going to say that. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're staying safe. Um, yeah, but that's my that's my printer uh, thoughts. Give them a go. Like I said, there's probably a, a, a nicer, better one at the moment, but yeah. Um, I am getting close to uh, the end of this piece. I, I did not know if I was going to be able to uh, wrap it up in the allotted time. I'm glad that I did. I have a couple more pieces that I'm wanting to get on to this evening. And uh, so, you know, one of the things that I've kind of, that, um, you know, depending on the piece and what it is and the scale of it and the detail involved, um, <laughs> these, have, these have kind of taken on a whole life of their own. Uh, they're not, you know, I think one of the differences in convention sketches and full illustration pieces that you can do like this, you know, whether it's a pre-order commission or something, is just the level of quality that you can get. You know, I can sit here in my comfortable space using these very specific tools with my table at the angle that I want to sit it at and, uh, you know, I, I can sit there and, and sometimes noodle with the, the, the piece itself and, and mess with it until I get it where I want to. And, you know, that's, that's kind of lovely. Um, all these pieces, like I mentioned earlier, I think kind of started out as maybe a little bit simpler, um, when, you know, the people ordered them. Uh, but I, you know, first off, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful to fans. I'm grateful for the support. You know, again, this kind of, I took these at a time where, you know, we, things were really rough and, and I needed the help and people were gracious and that means a lot to me. Um, um, but you know, the pieces are all the better for it. You know, this, this is, I'm really happy with the way that this one's coming together. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, so we've got about 20 minutes left. Uh, if anyone has any questions that they'd like to hit on right now, please feel free. Um... What's the craziest commission that someone's asked you to do, and did you do it? Um, I've been asked to do some kind of weird stuff over the years. Um, I think less so now. I think that maybe comics have kind of grown up a little bit or something, or maybe people know just, you know, not to be 
super weird. I, I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I think there's, there's kind of, there's, there's, there's weird and then sometimes there's inappropriate and, you know, that line, there's, there's a line, you know, I mean, um, I, I've been asked to do like really funny things, um, a few times. Um, you know, in, I, I don't want to, I don't want to take your question and uh and turn it on its head but i'm kind of gonna a little bit actually i want to i i would rather point to um a couple of the commissions that i've been asked to do that were beautiful and real honors um uh i met i met a guy and his dad at new york comic con um, great couple of guys, uh, and, um, his dad was, it was, if, if I remember correctly, it was his first New York Comic Con. They were coming, they were coming around, excited about artwork, excited about the convention. It was just fantastic. And, and seeing a father and son, you know, a, a son that's my age, with with his dad at a convention, it just it I don't know it it was lovely, and um, unfortunately, the dad passed away that that, that later that year that next year, and um, I got asked to do by the son I, I was I was asked to do a drawing of the two of them together. Uh, which is incredibly intimidating. I'm not gonna lie. If you ask me to draw a picture of you and someone else, or, or if you know, uh, been asked to do a few things, uh, it's intimidating. It really is, especially when it's somebody. There's so much love behind that, and I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna wreck this. But I, but I, I, I just I, I love these two dudes, and and I and you know, and I and it meant so much to be asked. And, um, so I did this piece and that really meant the world to me and, and it touched me and I got, and I, the next year, um, he, he got that piece at New York Comic Con and, and picked it up with his mother. She came and just seeing them and seeing their reaction when they got that piece meant the world to me another one that, that really meant so much to me was um uh i got to um draw a piece that was um part of a a wedding proposal and uh it, it was a kind of uh batwoman uh maggie sawyer themed proposal piece and Again, just talk about honored and intimidated, but it meant so much to be a part of that. And that's part, that's, that's another thing, you know, about this industry and about, about, um, about conventions in general is, is I met these people at shows, you know, I, I got to be part of their lives. I got to be part of a loving memory of a father and I got to be a part of of a a couple you know coming together that that's more beautiful than I you know you know that I ever could have imagined and I'm just a dude that draws funny books for a living you know I uh it's it's incredibly special I I've Again, I've been very, very fortunate. So, yeah, I've been asked to draw some weird stuff. Most of the time, I probably said no. But I've had the opportunity to draw some stuff that that was just life-changing. How's that for sappy sap sap? Uh, log, log lady versus creep versus the arm. Yeah, now, that would be an epic piece. I, I would I would love that. 
Um, yeah, so I'm I'm really rounding rounding the the, the end of this. Uh, I'm gonna take and do all of this background. I'm gonna kind of outline it and then go in and do the fills on it later. Um, uh, I'll probably post the finished piece of this uh, when it's done. It'll probably be done Saturday. Nah, probably late Saturday night, Sunday, somewhere in there. I'll post it. Like I said, I'm probably going to do some bonus content that's late night content. Hong Kong after hours. That's where, um, you know, I had a couple whiskeys and um, I'm contemplating a late night nap. It's probably me right there. Um, but let's see. There is that. Okay, so now I am basically done with the figure. And I, I'm happy with it. I like this. Like I said, this is a cool piece to do. I was honored to get to draw such a cool looking original character. Uh, this came out really well. I'm happy with it. And I'm happy to also finish another piece that, that I was hoping to have done a long time ago. Uh, that's one thing about everybody with this is that they've been so patient. You know, um, I think that sometimes, you know, there's this feeling like, like creators don't particularly, you know, care. They take commissions and, and you know, I, <laughs> I can only speak for myself, but, but I, 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 you know, we talk about this amongst ourselves, but like, uh, I think we worry about this a lot. I think we worry about, you know, we want you to be happy. We want you to enjoy something that we draw. I don't ever... I don't ever do a thing where, uh, you know, I'm just trying to to shit something out quickly because, you know, it's going to be out there forever and you're going to have to see that piece and you're going to, you know, hopefully enjoy it. Um, so, yeah, I it's important to me. Uh, I am going to start spinning the page a little bit. Sorry about that. This is just, this has got to happen. Uh, I think putting my head a little too far into the frame. I'm going to try to tilt my camera a little bit for that. So sorry about the wobble. Uh, yes, you do spy a tentacle theme. As a theme that, you know, I, I, I love having. I love... Uh, in fact, a couple pieces that I'm going to do this weekend are going to have this similar theme because I, I love this kind of, uh, you know, hint at a darker uh, Lovecraftian feeling thing. It's fun. Uh, yeah, so I've drawn a couple pieces lately that, that have very much, you know, some of this. Uh, I think that, um, you know, I start to look at, like, stuff from, uh, sea life or, uh, insects or certain plants, you know, you start to see these really creepy, beautiful, weird shapes and... Kind of love examining those. I think that that they're fun to draw. You can kind of see where so many um, along the way, so many uh, creatives are, have been inspired by sea life or uh, insects. You know, they they sort of feel very much like they feel very alien. And uh, I kind of love that. I love any of that kind of representation. It's very, it's, it's, it can be both beautiful and horrific. I'm 
hoping that I can get this done. It's going to go pretty quickly, but I've only got about 10 more minutes left before I'm going to take this break. I'm going to be honest with you too, uh, I drink a lot of coffee, so I need to pee. Yes, how's that? It's one of the downsides of um, working exactly uh, 20 feet from, not even that, I, I, my bathroom is 12 feet, you know, from my desk. You, you develop a baby bladder really fast uh, making comics, you know, this, you're home, you're right there, you don't have to wait or walk. So then when I travel, it's terrible. I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna be the guy that's asking you to stop every, you know, 11 and a half minutes, you know, can we stop again during road trips? I'm a delight. Let's see, we got, you know, Um, so before we go, I want to talk a little bit about my Patreon again, and I want to offer a, I want to make a special offer to you all. Um, so, uh, during Han Con 2, The Wrath of Han, if you are a new Patreon subscriber, and I'm saying this on any level, I have different levels, I have one dollar levels where you get some stuff i've got five dollar level where you get most things and then they go up from there there's a few options where literally you can have a uh, like uh, a special cocktail hour where basically a group of us just sits down and has a drink together uh every once in a while like every month um there's options where you can get a, a box of cool stuff sent to you. Uh, my various artwork, uh, you know, the original piece of art. You can get all the, the stories that I've done uh, in that period of time. Prints, various things. There's a lot of different things that you can do. But if you sign up for any of those levels, anyone, whether it's the dollar or the, you know, $50 or whatever it is, uh, monthly... Uh, thing um y during this you get uh and i posted it on my facebook page you can see it i wanted to have one printed out and i actually just didn't have time to do it but um i i made vip uh hong kong convention passes so i will send you a, a an actual uh convention pass for hong kong with your name on it and i'll sign the back of it um Check it out. Maybe look a little lanyard to even put them in. But um, I will send you one of those. In that same package, you will also get an exclusive um, print for just for Patreon subscribers. If you're already a Patreon subscriber, if you already you know have supported me, you get one. You of course you get one because I love you and I appreciate the hell out of you. And uh, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna get that. Um, but, um, but, uh, I'm doing those for, for new subscribers. You also, if you get that, you also get an exclusive, uh, code that is only good for my Patreon folk. And, uh, that, that discount code means that you get, uh, 20% off on my online store as opposed to the same 10% off that everyone else is getting right now. So if you go to my store right now, you can use the the uh, order code HONKON2 to get 10% off. But if you're a Patreon subscriber, you get 20% off plus the extra goodies, like I said, of a physical copy of a HONKON2 convention uh, VIP badge. And you also get a really cool exclusive print um that i'm gonna send your way so yeah og uh patreon subscribers i love you and support you and you're gonna get those in your 
uh, mailbox soon. Uh, new subscribers, come on, check it out. Like, and, and seriously, like, even even if, um, you know, times are tough. So many of you are furloughed. So many of you uh, don't currently have any exp extra in expendable income. Bop over to my Patreon and just check it out. I have some free content on there for you. Uh, I get it. And, and honestly, like, if you can't, I love you too. I, I seriously appreciate everyone and I appreciate the situations. And I'm not trying to over ask right now. Um, do what you can. And, and, and you know, like, I... I I respect it, and I and I know that this is a tough time for everybody. So, you know, just do what you can, and and there's really no expectation. But yeah, at least you know, at least pop over. I've, like I said, I've got some free, uh, fun content on there. I've got the entire uh, issue uh, story that Mike Tisserand and I did for Chaos Agent for Bad Karma. You can check out that entire. 21 22 page story it's it's kind of a one shot it's a fun fun little introduction to that universe um we've got some more free content that's going to be popping up pretty soon um i've got a couple of you know some illustrations i've got some posts just about uh my thoughts on various things those those are up there and those are free and i you know i'm gonna probably even put up some extra new free stuff just because I, I do want people during this time to have content. Uh, I want I want us to all be able to to have things that we enjoy during this. Um, you know, I, I am honestly, you know, I I'm trying to make ends meet too, but that can't come at the at the cost of you. So you know, please understand, do what you can. Um, so it's almost time to wrap up my live draw session. I've been here for about two hours hanging out with you all. Uh, it's, it's been fantastic. Um, thanks so much for the questions. Uh, I appreciate you. I, I, you know, each one of you that bopped on, uh, each one of you that, that asked a question or had something to say or made me laugh, uh, you know, I appreciate that. Um, I'm gonna take a short break I'm gonna probably drink a bottle of water or two, well, a glass of water or two. I'm not drinking bottles of water right now, uh, but a glass of water or two to try to hydrate so that my throat and voice don't get ragged. I am talking way too much, but um, maybe grab a snack, chill for a few minutes, make some posts on the internet, um, I want to thank each and every one of you again. Uh, you've been awesome. Um, this new angle is kind of fun. You can see my little, uh, cute little pill bug. These come from like a, uh, is it, is it gotcha pot? Is that what those are called? The little, um, Japanese vending machines, but these are, these are really great. And I, again, I was talking earlier about insect life. You know, these almost look like they belong in the background of this. They're uh, kind of really cool, and they f they roll into bugs, or we're sorry, roll into balls, pill bugs. But yeah, I've got three of those. Those are kind of cool. Um, yeah, you can also see my little uh, doodle of Batman having a cocktail. That was one of the things that I was thinking about for um, for doing for uh, October. Uh, you know, um, I, I know that there's Inktober and I know that people have various feelings on that. I was thinking about doing Drinktober, uh, you know, imagining which cocktails each, uh, superhero would drink. I was even thinking about it'd be fun with like some, like non-alcoholic cocktails for, because we do have several superheroes that are sober and I appreciate that. And, uh, you know. While I am a fan of the good, good brown liquor myself, I respect others and what they need and what they want. And uh, so, you know, 
Um, so really quickly before I go, um, please feel free to check out cadencecomicart.com. Uh, we currently have 20% off on all of my original artwork. You can get uh, pages from just about any book that I've done. You can get covers. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they are, uh, I think they're, they're very fairly priced for original pieces of artwork that can hang on your wall. Um, you can get all of those. Uh, right now, they are 20% off. Check them out. Um, you can also go to jeremyhan.com and check out my big cartel store. Everything that um, I showed you earlier um, is on there. Uh, you can see, you can get, um, if you're missing an issue of The Red Mother, I have those. Uh, if you are looking for a beauty uh, tray, I have those. I am and will be signing everything, and uh, I can personalize it to you if you'd like. Uh, whatever you'd like. I've got a bunch of stuff on there. Again, also check out my Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash Jeremy Hahn and uh, get on there and get that cool new swag. Um, I'm going to be back at 5 o'clock in exactly one hour. Um, and I'm going to be having a talk with James Tynion, the fourth from... Uh, you probably know him from Someone's Killing the Children from Boom Studios or a little rare kind of book that he's working on right now called Batman, you know, something like that. Um, yeah, James is fantastic. One of the sweetest people I know. We're also probably going to end up talking a little bit about our love of baking sourdough bread. That may be a theme that happens with uh, a couple of creators in this. I know that uh, that's James. James is doing that. I know that um, Andy Parks is also doing that. Speaking of Andy Parks, join me for cocktail hour, me and Andy, for cocktail hour. We are going to sit down and we are going to each make a drink and uh, show you how we make it. And uh, then we're going to um, talk about some fun stuff. Uh, Andy, uh, just today, Andy's new, um, the, the adaptation of his comic book, Ciudad, is out. Uh, the film of it is out on Netflix. It's called Extraction, starring Chris Hemsworth. Uh, you know, uh, my buddy Andy got to have a, a, something that he wrote adapted by the Russo brothers from, uh, from all of the, the Avengers goodness and starring that dreamy, dreamy, dreamy Chris Hemsworth. Uh, you know, so, uh, it's on Netflix. We can check it out now. And I, I, I honestly have heard that it's fantastic. Uh, the Russos make a damn good movie. Hemsworth is a consummate, handsome badass. Uh, I think it's worth checking out. So uh, Andy and I are going to talk about that a little bit, about making something and then having it become something else. How uh, unique that is and how wonderful it is and terrifying it can be. Um, about making things for the joy of making them and, and what that becomes. Uh, feel free to join us. Um, I, you know, do, tell us what, you know, if you're having a drink, uh, and that can be an alcoholic drink, that can be tea. You can have a nice cup of tea. You can have a coffee. You can have uh, anything. Just join us and, uh, you know, we, we, we're happy to have you there. So that'll, uh, I'm, I'm talking with James Tynion at 5 o'clock Central. One hour from now, um, talking with Andy Parks at 6 o'clock Central. That's two hours from now. Uh, thanks so much. Thank you for checking things out. I am not quite finished with this piece, uh, as you can see, but I'm close. That's, that's you know, a solid two hours worth of work. Um, probably have about another 20 minutes, half an hour, 20 minutes left on this. Uh Eh, maybe longer fills, but you know, you can see it there. 
Really love how this piece turned out. Uh, I'm so, so excited to finally get it in the hands of the person that ordered it. Again, thanks so much. You've been awesome. I appreciate every one of you. Um, oh, hey, yeah, Carly, I just asked if we could get some, uh, some bottled cocktails. I should do that. Oh, that's so, that's so, that's so illegal. Yeah, I'm a rebel though. We'll see. Thanks so much, everybody. You've been awesome. I appreciate you. I love you all. Uh, I hope to see you at, uh, five o'clock for my talk with James Tynion. Have a great time. Talk, talk soon.